So I want everyone to look at the word up there on the screen. And now I want you to look away. Wherever, wall, lap. Now look back. So has anything strange happened to the word? Uh, are any letters misplaced? Is it a totally different word? If so, you might want to ask yourself, am I dreaming? What you just did is called a reality check or a state test. And if you're going to become an aeronaut, it's something you're going to want to start to do very regularly. Oh, aeronautics is the exploration of dreams. So I've always been fascinated by dreams. I can still remember dreams that I had as a very little girl, as have many artists. Uh, so I loved things like dream dictionaries, uh, figuring out what my dreams might mean. But like a lot of people, the older I got, the less I dreamt. So that changed about three years ago, and I was working in a job I hated. I was stressed out, and that stress kind of came over into my, into my night times. So I was sleeping terribly. When I woke up, I felt like I had been at work all day, or all, all day and all night. Uh, so I started taking a supplement called 5-HTP, which I found about, out about via Google, uh, the best healthcare provider ever. So I started taking it, and my sleep improved dramatically. I also started dreaming, and that was when I had my first lucid dream. So lucid dreaming is when you are conscious in your dream. You wake up kind of into the dream. And most of the time, you're not aware of the fact that you're dreaming. Weird things happen, and it's just like, okay, there's a penguin. Oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, but when you wake up to the fact that you're asleep so much as possible, and you, not, none of the laws of normal reality apply. So I'm going to step back, which is to ask, why do we dream? Uh, so many theories abound. None of them have been decided on, but some people think that it's a way to respond to threatening situations, kind of an evolutionary thing. A lot of people have kind of a theory of detritus, as I called it, call it, which is that there's no meaning to dreams. But I follow the theory that dreams are how our subconscious or unconscious speaks to us. So even if you don't like the idea of the higher self, I think it's possible to kind of get behind the idea that our brains and our bodies maybe realize things that our conscious minds do not. And I think that this is how dreams, that's what dreams are doing. It's kind of that way of, of our subconscious talking to us. So how does that relate to lucid dreaming? So a lot of people conceptualize lucid dreaming as kind of this nighttime playground where anything is possible. You're in control. There's lots of like dream flying and dream sex. And that's pretty much what you do. And that doesn't really align with, the, with my theory. But I think that lucid dreams are a place where you can kind of relate more fully to those symbols from the subconscious. So instead of waking up in the morning and being like, what was that gun-toning ballerina all about? You can turn to her and say, who are you and what are you trying to tell me? So to become a nine knot, you want to start by writing down your dreams. Keep a pen and a notebook beside your bed. And whether it's because your subconscious knows that you're finally listening or because you're generating that kind of groove in your brain, you start to remember your dreams more. Pretty much everybody who starts to do this starts to have increased dream recall. Pay attention to what's happening in your dreams. So especially the things that are out of the ordinary. So I spend a lot of dream time in my childhood home, a place that I have not stepped foot in for 15 years. So those things that are not common in your waking life, those are the things that you want to pay attention to, and they're called dream signs, and they can clue you into the fact that you're dreaming. So also do those reality checks. Another one, aside from looking at text and seeing if it changes, is seeing whether your fingers pass through your hand. And if they do, <laughs> probably you're dreaming. There are a couple of ways to induce lucid dreaming. Uh, so there's something called a dream-induced lucid dream, which is just kind of a, either a spontaneous recognition of the fact that you're dreaming, or you've done one of those reality checks or recognized a dream sign. There's also something called wake-induced lucid dreaming, which is where you lay down and go to try to go to sleep, and rather than all of the shifting that you do normally when you fall asleep, you kind of move over this way and then you move over this way, you stay entirely still, your body will think it's asleep, and your brain moves straight from consciousness to dream state without anything in between. And it's really challenging, and it's really weird, but it actually works and is super fascinating. So both of these things will work better if you follow something called the wake-back-to-bed method, which will greatly improve the chances of this happening, but involves waking up in the middle of the night and staying up for about an hour, so it kind of sucks. But go to bed for six hours, set an alarm, and then wake up and stay up for at least 20 to 60 minutes, 
and go back to bed. And because your brain wants to jump right into REM sleep, you are more likely to be able to have that lucid dream or recognize that you're dreaming. So one of the reasons I was captivated by lucid dreaming is because it's a totally, it's not even like being awake. It's being more than awake. So my experience of it was that it was this super beautiful, like everything was vibrant. It felt like more than, than the way normal life feels. And what's been really great is I've been able to pull that into my waking life. And so because I've had the experience of that kind of state of consciousness, I can look around, and I'm going to try to do it right now, but it's hard. But, like, colors are so much richer, and it's just, like, the world is kind of magical. And when you put yourself into that place, it's really interesting. So after about three years of focused dreaming, I am by no means a master of oneironautics. I am still obviously figuring out how to say the word, but uh, I'm definitely a devotee. So I remember my dreams about four to six days a week. I have one to two lucid dreams a month, which doesn't sound like a lot, but is actually a fair number if you like start to think about it. Um, I've joined the International Association for the Study of Dreams, which has a Toronto chapter, and that's a really, really fascinating organization. So if you're interested in learning more, I would recommend their website. Um, and I've read a ton. So as any good librarian, I have a lot of book recommendations. So if you're interested in learning more, I'm happy to share those with you. But in the meantime, I hope that you go home tonight and have really wonderful dreams.